Hello and welcome to another standard video here in the Duskmorn preview event. Today we're taking a look at a blue, black, red or Grixis Overlord deck featuring the new Overlords from Duskmorn. The black one can be played as a 5 mana 5-5 five five, and then when it enters or attacks we can mill 4 cards and return a non-avatar creature card or planeswalker from our graveyard to our hand. But it also has the new impending mechanic reminiscent of the suspend mechanic. So we can pay 2 mana, put it on the battlefield as an enchantment, so it's not a creature yet, with five time counters on it and then at the beginning of our end step we get to remove a time counter on it once all time counters are gone we can start attacking with our 5-5 and re-enable the ability and then if we play it with the impending cost it also triggers the ability right away since it's still entering the battlefield so we can still use it as a two mana enabler to help fill the graveyard and maybe enable some of our delirium synergies which is another returning mechanic in this set and then we've got the Red Overlord. This one is 4 mana to impend. And then we deal 4 damage to any target. And then later we can also cast it for 6 mana to immediately get to 5-5 five, five in play. And now a very cool synergy with Overlords is the one with Render Inert, which is a 3 mana sorcery. Removes up to 5 counters from target permanent. Doesn't care what type of counter. And we also get to draw a card. So now we potentially have the sequence of turn 2, impend the Overlord. And then turn 3, remove all the time counters and immediately immediately attack with our 5-5 since it doesn't have summoning sickness that's a bit different from the suspend mechanic where it specifically gives your creature haste not necessary here since the enchantment was already on the battlefield so that way we get to immediately start filling the graveyard and accumulate a lot of value since we get to return a lot of creatures and planeswalkers to our hand as well and then the red overlord is very similar we just don't get that two drop into three drop curve that we get with a black overlord and then you may remember render inert also combining very nicely with battle as we can remove defense counters from a battle to transform it and we are playing invasion of Amonkhet which adds another card type as a battle to enable delirium it also mills each player for three when it enters so that's another way to enable delirium and then we get to draw whereas the opponent discards and then we can easily transform the invasion even without attacking it in this deck by either casting a render inert or maybe using the red overlord to deal four damage to it directly and then we get a lasso tap convert which can also become one of the overlords if we have them in the graveyard and immediately get their ETB effect. So that's also a very powerful and then uh, rounding out the deck we've got a couple more new creatures the fear of missing out a two mana two three enchantment creature so that's two potential card types for enabling delirium the card has delirium itself and when it enters we get to discard a card and then draw a card so that can also help fill the graveyard to enable delirium and we can also potentially just draw a card with it if we're empty handed so it's not a bad top deck and then if we attack with the fear of missing out while we have delirium enabled we now get to untap target creature and we get an additional combat phase so that can also be great if we have have an active overlord as we get to keep attacking and deal more damage or get more stuff back from our graveyard and then the stick twister is a two mana two two artifact creature with a lifelink so it's another extra card type for delirium and with delirium enabled at the beginning of our end step so it can potentially trigger the same turn we played it we get to make the opponent either discard a card or sacrifice a non-land permanent if they don't we get to deal damage to the opponent equal to the stick twister's power and since it has lifelink we will also gain two life in the process and there's also a cool interaction if we use our lasso tap convert to copy the stick twister and make it a 4-4 then now we can deal four damage and gain four life instead of just two damage and then we've got the deep cavern bat giving us some much needed hand disruption liliana is also a planeswalker we might be able to return with the black overlord adds another card type for delirium as a planeswalker and of course the minus two can also be useful against creatures that we may not be able to answer with our typical spot removal and then we've got still two copies of cut down and the full set of go for the throat as instance for delirium and more interaction to hopefully keep the opponent off balance and then our mana base also got a huge upgrade we're playing a lot of the new verge lands which initially only make one color until we have the corresponding basic land type then it unlocks the second color as well so these play very well with the basic land plus fabled passage package but they also play well with the survey lands which also incidentally help us smooth out our draws and enable delirium at the same time so we're playing theaters and thundering falls as well and then uh, one black leaf cliffs and one dark slick shores just to give us a few more untapped lands early so yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw. We've got a turn two overlord, turn three render inert, so I'll try it. Opponents on some sort of manifest dread deck. 
And I'll keep a swamp on top so we can curve out smoothly. Our opponent passes. I'll go with Overlord over Bant, so next turn we could be attacking with our 5-5 already. Put on discarding an Armadillo to get a basic land. And then Liliana might be the pick now. So we can deal with a larger creature. Opponent's got up the Beanstalk. So they're also prepping for the late game. Yeah, I think it's still worth going for. And then now maybe grab the fear of missing out. Can discard a cut down to hand size since I don't think that'll be finding many targets. And then next turn we have options, including Deep Cavern Bat plus Fear of Missing Out as our opponent answers our Overlord with a Leyline Binding. Definitely want to play one Bat, and then we'll see if we need to play a second. Could now also consider Invasion, since I can transform it with Overlord, but it's not very mana efficient. Alright, so opponent's got a pretty full grip. Uh, the overlords also play well with scroll shifts. Opponent's got uh, conquest to reanimate cards like the armadillo and any of their uh, overlords that they might have in play. And they've got a green overlord as well. Zur also plays well with leyline binding. So there's a lot of problems. Now opponent does not seem to have blue mana yet, so maybe we can let them keep Zur. And then just snipe the green overlord and the white one. And then their hand is a lot less exciting. Because yeah, the overlords would also draw with up the beanstalk. Now they could still scroll shift. The Leyline Binding to free one of their creatures by getting rid of the bat. But then we would get our Overlord back at least. And our opponent did end up finding blue mana, even though it's tapped right now. But yeah, opponent playing Zur and then immediately being able to turn Binding into a 6-6 with lifelink is pretty powerful. So we've got our work cut out for us. This turn might be fine to play the Invasion. And then I could consider attacking the invasion with the bats in case I don't want to use the overlord. Could still uh, deal 4 damage over the course of 2 turns. Found an untapped land, so now I can still play the fear of missing out. And then discard theater to draw. Finding another Liliana. So transforming the invasion can give us access to another overlord or the stick twister with delirium enabled. Opponent going for conquest. So we'll see what they sacrifice. Double up the beanstalk to bring back overlords and armadillo. I guess we milled one with the invasion. Yeah, that's pretty good. Four damage from overlords, not quite enough. Although we could double Liliana, which seems pretty decent here. Make them sag both creatures. Even though I would have liked to keep Liliana as an answer to Zur. Can still deal 4 damage with Overlord, I suppose. Transform our invasion. And get an additional attack step with the fear of missing out. And now could also go for the opponent's overlord as opposed to the one that deals damage. Or do we prefer stick twister? It is pretty good as a 4-4. Four four. 
or do we prefer extra land? I don't really need the land. So yeah, let's go with the Stick Twister, just to see it in action. And then it'll trigger end of turn. Opponent probably discards a card. And there's Azur. Can activate on Leyline Binding. And get an attack in. I'll let Liliana go. And then now we can just hard cast a six mana Overlord. It's no fun when they hit back. Go for the throat, also an answer. Can maybe deal with the binding after we deal with Zur. I guess could also do both, just impend it and then go for the throat. But once it no longer has lifelink, it's not a huge concern. So we'll cast it for six, even though we're maybe overextending into a sunfall somewhat. Attack. Can untap the stick twister. And hit you for another four. As our opponent discards Armadillo. Let's see if our opponents can maybe cast an Atraxa here. That wouldn't really save them since we have Go for the Throats. Opponents discards a land, otherwise they would have taken another four. And now we could maybe untap the Overlord to get two attacks in. Right, opponents got their own Black Overlord. Does not get to return removal spells. But uh, Zur, I guess, giving Binding lifelink again is pretty good. Although now I think the sequence is going to be attack, deal for damage to Zur, and then we can go for the throat before blockers. And that should be good enough. Going full control here just in case. Our opponent now pretty likely to want to block the Overlord and trade. So maybe should have targeted something else. But either way we should be fine. Get back a Liliana. Or at this point we can just play double Stick Twister. So our opponent has to trade. And then they're still taking a beating. I guess they don't have any permanents to sacrifice, so just playing a pair of stick twisters can drain them to death. Yeah, they can discard to the four-powered one, and then the two-powered stick twisters will deal two more damage each. And gain life in the process. Awesome, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and we've got what looks like a keeper. We'll need to find a third land. But uh, we've got the Surveil to help. Go for the Throats. Could be good against a creature deck, but... Still need a third land more, I think. Alright, it's gonna be an Armadillo. Has some built-in protection against removal. Let us see here. So I wouldn't be able to necessarily play a Liliana next turn. So, yeah, let's go with uh, Deep Cavern Bant, I think. And see a green-white enchantment deck. Their turn to play would be either Duelist or Talents. Calyx is going to be scary at some point as well. Maybe take the Talents. So they don't have an enchantment to copy with Calyx. Duelist can draw if it picks up counters. Liliana could now be an option, although I think I still prefer the Invasion. Can start pressuring it. And then we want to keep Go for the Throat to answer Calyx, although there is a second copy. And yeah, a Render Inert would have been nice too with the Invasion. Can try and transform it with our Bants. 
We already have Delirium. And the Red Overlord would have been awesome here to transform the invasion right away, but our land does enter tamped. Could still play Liliana and plus. Or we can keep up Go for the Throat to answer the Duelist if they put a counter on it. Although just playing another Bant I think makes more sense, since that way we can just transform the invasion next turn without much difficulty. And it's triple Calyx. And do we need Mountain? Not really. I guess it's still good to just hit our land drops in general, since we've got uh, interaction covered, I think. Calyx targets Duelist, draws a card. We'll take it. And then, right now, there's a Overlord or a Fear of Missing Out. We could uh, select with the Invasion. If I play Liliana M+, plus, I could also discard the Red Overlord to select that instead, and then still have Go for the Throat available. I kind of like that sequence, actually. I guess hmm, I didn't consider the lack of triple black, so I can't actually go for the throat here. So maybe a slight miscalculation. But we can still attack here. Transform the invasion. And then at this point... What do we remove? Could just be the duelists. And then... Next turn, if they play Calyx, they could make a 4-4 Calyx with a double Constellation trigger, but they don't have an enchantment to copy. Could still trade. I think that makes sense. But yeah, if we did have an extra mana for Go for the Throat, this game would have been over. Innkeeper's Talents is decent. Can just let Liliana go to keep the Overlord. Is their opponent actually making a 1-5 Armadillo? But now they don't have a good attack. And we can consider minusing a Liliana. Take out... Probably the duelists. Pay the ward. And then I could still cast an overlord. Although next turn, I guess it would need like a cheap enchantment or an aura to enhance Calyx to get past the 5 5, which is not impossible. So let's just pass and keep up interaction. Spellbook Vendor, that happens. We'll see if they pay. They don't, so they might have a protection spell left for one mana. If they hit a Planeswalker, they don't get to trigger Calyx, so they're going face. But yeah, they're kind of between a rock and a hard place. Still gonna answer Calyx. And they did actually have a royal treatment. Alright, so Liliana down. And now Overlord's not enough to answer Calyx, so things could still get out of hand. Cut down the draw, so we can answer the vendor, play another Overlord. I guess Overlord can also get back Liliana. Uh, although, once again, we don't have enough black mana to impend, cut down, and minus Liliana. But I guess that doesn't matter when we can take out the vendor with an attack. So I do have to tap carefully. And get back Liliana. Attack. Take out vendor. And then Liliana's a nice answer to a large creature that has built-in protection. You go. 
So it looks like that'll do it. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We've got what looks like a keeper. All our colors. Only one tank planned. Get to surveil to maybe enable delirium. I think I will keep another land here. It's also our second red source, which could come in handy. And then, yeah, turn two, we've got a lot of options. I think I'm leaning towards a creature as opposed to the overlord. So we can maybe start pressuring the invasion. And uh, maybe it's fear of missing out, discard stick twister, adding creature and artifact. And then next turn with the invasion. Best case scenario, I have delirium by milling myself. And then I can attack twice with a fear, transforming the invasion already. It is a bit of a long shot, but worth a try. Just milled lanes, so only three types. Still got close. Opponents milled Sea Shark, and they're maybe on a room deck. I'll hit the invasion. So yeah, doesn't look like our opponent had any interaction, so we would have been able to transform the invasion, turn it into maybe a Stick Twister or a Sea Shark. Can try again next turn. All right, opponent keeping up three mana. Still probably start by attacking. Could enable Delirium by playing another Invasion, but I'm more likely to want a double Deep Cavern Bat here. Maybe I can start by playing a Bat. That way, if they remove the Bat, I can still maybe gain access to it with the Invasion. Point has got an Entity Tracker. So that will present a blocker for fear of missing out. And our opponent's indeed on a room deck. This one deals for damage. This one bounces a creature for one mana. This one makes mana. And this one deals damage equal to the number of cards in hand. I think the Furnace is probably the best one to take. Either that or the one mana bounce spell as the cheapest answers to our creatures. But yeah, we sadly don't have removal for the tracker, which would have been pretty nice here. So I can just play another bat, take out the pool. So then at best they can play a three mana enchantments. Draw with a tracker. I doubt our opponent's gonna let this transform. Yeah, I think uh, that's still the play. Sadly, if one bat dies, we are a little bit short of transforming the invasion with an attack. And creature is not an extra type for delirium either. But I can maybe mill myself to enable delirium. Right, opponent got back the one mana answer so they can play that as well. And pull ahead with a tracker. It's going to be Omen Hawker instead. Can also be activated to enable rooms, I suppose. All right, well, our hand's pretty one-dimensional, but uh, we'll start here. Mill to Liliana. And drew a land. May as well play it. And attack. And I guess never mind, we can untap the bat now to ensure that we transform the invasion. Thanks to the delirium. So that worked out. And what's the best creature we can select here? Can get back a four powered fear of missing out, or can go for a deep cavern bat taking their removal. That seems better. And then with a four-powered bat, it's going to be pretty easy to keep transforming our invasion. All right, so can play another invasion or a five-mana overlord, which could mill something even better. 
Can also get back Liliana. Does our opponent trump here? They might be in that situation already. And I don't think we care too much about our smoky lounge to take it with a bat. So, yeah, just cast Overlord. Seems fine. See what we can mill. Another Overlord we cannot get back, but we can transform into. And for now, not hating Liliana. Attack. Opponent lets it transform. And then, yeah, once again, what do we want to choose here? Another Overlord versus Bat take another one of their cards. Could be bad if our opponent's playing a Sweeper, but since they're playing so many creatures, I guess they still have Ill-Timed Explosion as a potential top deck. But they would also need to draw an expensive card alongside it to deal enough damage. Fear of missing out would also be fun, but not really necessary. So I'll just take the Bats. When in doubt. Right, Meat Locker can keep a creature tapped down. Draws with a Tracker. And they did draw land, so now Liliana's Minus will just eat up an Incubator token, which is a little bit less exciting. So yeah, step one, Invasion. Can keep attacking it with our Bats. And now we found the Red Overlord. So, might be worth it to send both bats just to ensure that we get one. And then our opponent needs to top deck a sweeper to recover. So, we want to start planning for that potential outcome. But for now, the Red Overlord. Deal for damage to, I want to say, Entity Tracker, since that's more likely to get out of hand. And then I can still play Stick Twister. Alright, and cross our fingers that our opponent doesn't top deck a Sweeper. That's where maybe having some of our overlords with time counters on it could work out better, since at least we'll have something left. And it's just a land. So... Opponent can still unlock one of their rooms to draw. But we can have a peek with a bat once again. All right, so this attack's taking out the shark. So I get to transform another invasion if I'd like. That will make them discard. And they discarded the counter spell. Liliana could now also just plus to make them discard their last card. Attack, sending one bat at the invasion. These go face. And Stick Twister does not want to attack since they'll still have a 3 3 blocker. Well, that's a lot of value. Bone falls to 8. Can we somehow win the game here? Well, looks like we can. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. We're missing black mana, although we do have Render Inert to combine with our Overlords. Although even if I find an untapped black source, I wouldn't be able to necessarily attack on turn 3. So it is a little bit clunky. But uh, I'll give it a shot. We do get to surveil a few times to fix our colors. And the Gloom Lake is perfect. Opponent also with a Delirium deck here, fear of missing out. See the Shrieker to manifest the Dread. And our opponent can potentially destroy enchantments with the formation as well. So turn two, 
could already impend the Overlord in the hopes of next turn drawing another untapped land for Render Inert. I think it's worth a shot, since upside's pretty high. And then get back, I want to say Liliana, although at least a fear of missing out I can cast for two mana next turn to improve my hand. And I'm missing double black for Liliana anyways. Our opponent actually destroys our enchantments, all right. Fair enough. At least we have Delirium enabled now. And uh, I guess Stick Twister, maybe over Fear. Since this will trigger end of turn, so we get immediate value. And don't need another tap lane. So next turn we can impend the Red Overlord and then attack with it on the following turn already. As our opponent plays a Shrieker, that's fine, can take it out. Stick Twister attacks. And yeah, if our opponent keeps taking damage as opposed to sacrificing or discarding, this is essentially dealing 4 damage and gaining 4 life per turn, which isn't bad for a 2-drop. And our opponent's got another Shrieker, although it's gonna meet the same fate here. So this time, render inerts. And then I do want to get the Fear of Missing Out going. Attack. Blow up the Shrieker. And then now with the Fear of Missing Out, we can set up an additional attack step next turn. Can probably ditch another render inert at this point. Would have been fun with the invasion, I suppose. But Overlord can also deal 4 damage to transform it. And our opponent's pretty far behind. Alright, they do have removal for Overlord, not quite. So this should seal the deal. Can attack. Clear fear of missing out. Untapping Overlord in the process. So that can attack a second time. And a smuggler surprise to only protect bigger creatures, so it does not apply to the fear of missing out. But that's what our opponent was trying to set up, cheating some huge creatures into play with a smuggler surprise. Just didn't quite work out for them. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Missing blue mana. No render inert to really power this up. So, could be functional, but I think we can do better. This time we have render inert, but nothing to go with it. I think I still try it. And then we've got some early removal. Hope to find one of our overlords. And maybe ditch the stick twister or one render inert. Facing an aura deck. So we can black leaf cliffs to take out the scavenger. And talents, so take that out. And now fear of missing out. Over stick twister, maybe discarding stick twister. Alright, more removal is good in this matchup. And a Calyx is a good target. Removing counters from the opponent's creatures could also be relevant with our render inert. I guess we already had an instant, so milling the land actually gave us delirium. Alright, so we're getting in for 4 per turn. Not the fastest clock. And our opponent can level up the talents to protect future creatures. In Deep Cavern Bat, we'll have a look. 
and see a land. All right, so our opponent stop decking. And we should have another creature covered with go for the throat. And another fear of missing out at this point can ditch the render inerts. And pass a turn. And that'll do it. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We have the turn 2 Overlord, turn 3 Render Inert, so sign me up. Just need to make sure we fetch on turn 1 with Fabled Passage. And then I do need to get either Swamp or Island. I guess Swamp makes the most sense. Our opponent in the meantime surveilling Satoru into the graveyard. And we get to return a Liliana. Opponent has another Satoru, although they do know about Liliana. Yeah, we could start attacking with Overlord, just minusing Liliana still seems decent. And then next turn we also have the option of double spelling. Stick Twister, go for the throat. One of your friends has to leave. And now a manifest of dread. So now we could also have a look with the bats. Yeah, if I keep up go for the throat, we can maybe answer the face down card to protect Liliana so we can minus again. I'll start by plussing. Not entirely sure what to get rid of. Maybe one render inert can go after all. Opponent discards a go for the throat. And then now we can have a peek. Opponent does have another Satoru and a not dead after all. So take Satoru and then I'll just answer the face down card right now. So we don't have to worry about it. Turned out to be Volgavoth, so that's a scary one. And yeah, I guess with Not Dead after all, they could have tried to cheat it onto the battlefield if it somehow traded. So that might be part of their plan. Now they do have another Not Dead in hand, so we would be plussing Liliana instead. And then Render Inert on the Overlord. Can also get back at Liliana. Don't have to attack with a 5-5. Could keep it back to protect Liliana. And then for now just plus. Bone may as well cast it. And I think keep the fear of missing out, which can draw me a card if I'm empty-handed. And then I'll keep this one back to block. Bat can attack. And then now we can safely minus Liliana. All right, hide in plain sight makes a pair of extra 2-2s two face down. So they might have more ways to turn those face up. But uh, yeah, still gonna minus Liliana. And then can play a land, fear of missing out. So we immediately draw. And find a stick twister. So, a minus two. <laughs> Haven't you ever Can attack now. Get back another stick twister. And can play the pair of them.
Delirium is enabled, so those will deal two damage right away, unless your opponent wants to sacrifice something. And then our opponent stop decking, so they'll need a pretty good one off the top. But yeah, if they can somehow get a Volgovoth on the battlefield, they could certainly get there. Turns out to be Satoru. And uh, sure. Get to surveil, cut down would be a fine draw. Although we're just gonna end up milling it here. Attack. Drop it. And then Fear of Missing Out can target the Overlord, so that gets to attack again. Get back a Deep Cavern Bat. And that'll do it. Awesome. So yeah, we got to see our Grixis Overlords in action. And against creature strategies, this seems to line up pretty well, since we have so much creature removal and interaction in general. And then the Overlords are perfect for kind of going over the top. But there are also decks out there that can go over the top of our strategy. Decks that have Sunfall to exile all our creatures can also kind of find some of our graveyard synergies. So it's not an unbeatable deck by any means, but you can tailor it to be better against aggro or control by either including more instant speed removal or perhaps more discard effects, so it should translate pretty well in best of three. And on the best of one ladder, if you're playing this and face a lot of red aggro decks, you can easily toss in a couple extra Torch the Tower, for instance, which lines up pretty well against all the red decks. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.